Hi there, it's Father Gareth, and welcome to our worship for the third Sunday of Easter. Perhaps you'll join with me in saying, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our Gospel reading from Luke today, we'll hear of how two disciples are walking on the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. The crucifixion has happened, and they're not aware that Jesus has risen from the dead. And as they're walking and talking with each other, a stranger draws near. They don't recognise who he is. But later on, after their conversation with the stranger, they invite him in to share supper, and he breaks bread with them. And in that simple act of sharing bread in the home, they recognise him to be Jesus. And as they look back on the conversation, they say to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days. What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. What is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then, some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are. And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Two disciples drag their feet as they walk. 
they're heading home. But it's a seven mile uphill journey from where they started to that village called Emmaus. They're leaving Jerusalem behind. And as they haul themselves home, they're feeling really sad and they're looking sad. In fact, they're filled with disappointment. And I wonder if you've ever felt a bit like that, crushed by disappointment and feeling let down, feeling that life literally is an uphill struggle. I know I have. But what happens next in the story is really skillfully and carefully told by St Luke. And in fact, if you'd produced this as one of your English assignments, you'd have been dead proud and rightly so. Because the story moves from sadness to joy, and from things that are hidden to things that are uncovered. And it all hinges on a dramatic moment of recognition. Those who know about these things have a fancy pants term for when that ever happens in a story, and it's called anonoresis. Anonoresis. It's a moment of realisation or a moment of, of recognising something, anorexis. Shakespeare did it all the time. But we also see it in the, in the Harry Potter books, when Harry finally realises that Professor Snape is not, is not the villain that he thought he was, but all along has been protecting Harry out of love for his mother. And that for Harry is a moment of anorexis when he recognises Snape for who he really is. And in fact, it's the same then for the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They first of all encounter a stranger, and the stranger walks alongside them and listens to them and talks with them. And so they can't help but invite him in to share a meal. And it's when he takes bread and blesses it, breaks it and then and shares it, that they suddenly realise who he is. Their eyes were opened, says Luke, and they recognised him. And all of a sudden, all that pent-up tension in the story gets released in that moment of, of recognition, and their sadness turns to utter relief. Something new has happened, and, and suddenly the world seems a really different place from the one that it was before. And that is the power of Easter. Well, a recognition scene is always a satisfying climax to a story. But Luke's whole purpose in telling his story about Emmaus is, is not to be clever, but to teach us that every time we gather at table in memory of Jesus, our eyes can be opened to recognise him. But the problem for us at the moment, of course, is that our churches are closed and we can't do what we would normally do each Sunday, just as Jesus did take bread and bless it, break it and give it, and, and in doing that, recognise that Christ is among us. We can't do that right now. So maybe what we need to do is recognise that Easter, in fact, transforms the whole of life, and that in all our relationships, if we look hard enough, we can see the glow of Easter, and we don't need to be in church to realise that. And in fact, it happened for those two disciples in that very ordinary act of walking along the road. I've walked a fair few miles since we closed our school buildings a month ago. And sometimes I've walked just for the sake of going somewhere or getting away or just getting some exercise, even if I always ended up back where I started. And on my many walks amid fear and prayer and times of emptiness and stillness and, and the odd tear even, I've sometimes found a real moment of, of clarity and, and peace happening, I'd almost say a moment of resurrection. And it's never a, a wow kind of thing. And sometimes I'm not even aware in the moment that things are, are different. Sometimes it takes a little while to recognise the heart-burning presence of God alongside us. So perhaps in these days when we can't gather at table and we can't take bread and bless it, break it and share it, what we can do is walk each day by faith, 
with our hearts somehow curled around hope, toward the invitation that comes from God's heart. Stay with me. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, I see thee, Lord, my spirit pants for thee, O living word. Bless thou the truth, dear So please join with me and pray. Lord Jesus, stay with me and be my companion on the way. Warm my heart and wake up my hope that I may know you in scripture and in the sharing of daily bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen.